Hey friends, we're learning all about strings in C-sharp. So David, we talked about white space. Yep. We did some trim. Uh, we did trim start, trim end. So we did the basics. Yep. We are running through all of this using the Microsoft Learn platform. So we're over here in learn.net under the C-sharp guide and we're going through the tutorials. Now here under do more with strings, we do some basic things like removing spaces, but we can also change the text. Okay, so we can say replace, and replace is really convenient because what you're doing is you're searching for something, yep. finding exactly how much space it took up, and then swapping it out. Yeah, that right? sounds hard. It is hard, and we used to have to do it in the old days by basically running around in the string, right, in that right. string of characters, looking for where something started, keeping track of it, looking for where it ended, and then chopping it up. It was a hassle. Yeah, it's a pain. But C Sharp prides itself on having these convenience functions to make things easier, doesn't it? In the actual core framework, what we call the BCL, the base class libraries, that is the set of libraries built into C Sharp, lets you do things like string replacing, um, and a lot of different built-in functions that are in the actual core platform itself. Mm -hmm. So let's try something here. Let's make a new string called friends. All right. And I'm going to take this whole thing from the bottom here. Notice how I'm just using shift and my cursor keys. To jump across the entire. Jump across there. I'm going to hit right. control X. I'm going to paste that there. Put my semicolon, which means the end of the line. And then I'm going to say my friends are here. OK. However, you've had a falling out with me. Ooh. Oh, no. So we're no longer friends. It's going to go badly now. How would we replace me with a cooler friend? You can't be replaced, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do we do instead? Who well, should we replace you with? That's the question. Let's say your friend Damien. OK. OK. Let's do that. So we'll say friends dot. Now, when I say dot, this is really cool. It actually pops up a whole list of things, but a bunch of them at the top are in stars. Stars. Hmm. OK. What is this? You know what star means? Star means those are the most likely methods you're going to call on this object. That is a great point. There's a list here of all the different things, all the stringy things. I can say, let's see, string contains. contains. Does the string have stuff? Or count things in a string. Uh, we can say uh, index of or length of string. We're going to talk yep. about those a little bit. But we can say replace. And replace, to your point, is very likely because it's common. super common. That's right. Good point. Good point. So we'll say friends.replace. And then we're going to open our parentheses. And I want to point out that when I opened up our parentheses there, I went open. And look how another one appeared next to it. So it went open and close. Yep. That's a, a little convenience. It's very nice. OK. So we're going to replace. And I said, quote, Scott. And I'm going to say, comma. And we can actually get our help pops up here suddenly. This is the dev kit as well. Yep. So it's saying, hey, if you want to do a replace, you give me the old one followed by the new one with a comma. Now we're calling a method, and we're going to learn more about that when we do object-oriented programming. But we're learning that in the trenches right now. Right. OK. So, so it says it's going to replace all occurrences of Scott in that string, friends, with? With? With, oh, in this case, Damien. All right. Who is our other friend. So you said all occurrences. All right, right. now, we're assuming that it's going to say my friends are Maria and Scott. So Scott only appears once. Right. But if it appeared multiple times, it'd be like replace all of them. Right. It's like when you, you know, uh, in, in a time travel movie, when the guy like disappears from his uh, his oh. driver's license. <laughs> so all the Scots everywhere in the erased. string are erased, and I've yeah. been replaced by by Damien. And we're doing that interestingly, all at once. Now, is the friends variable changing? That's a good question. You should print out the friends variable after the replace. And do a before and after. Yep, this will be before and after. Let's so do that. Have... Console dot. Oh, look, Ooh. right line has got a star. The most common. OK, that's cool. Friends. And then I'm going to say console dot right line. Or actually, you know, I'll just copy the whole thing. I'm going to hit Shift, down arrow, Control C, and then Control V. That's another good reminder. I don't control. remember all the hotkeys, but cut, copy, paste. XCV. Gotta Super important. That. So we're going to do that. And you might think that you would expect the entire sentence and then the one with Scott replaced by Damien. What's going to happen on that third one? We don't know. Let's find out. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the 
terminal here. I'm going to clear my terminal and I say .NET run. So we're going to compile that. See what happens. Oh, interesting. Okay, hang on. I was replaced on number two, but it didn't stick. That's right. So it, it seems didn't... like you didn't change the actual variable friends. Friends didn't get changed. What you got was a new string, return from replace, that had the uh, name Damien in place of Scott, but that gave you a new string. So you got new storage space for this new sentence, and the old friend sentence remained the same. Okay. And so that means that this replace is returning another new string, That's right. makes no change to this. Do all methods like that not change the variable, or does it really uh, depend? It depends. That's okay. the best answer, right? It yeah. depends. It depends. Um, strings in .NET are immutable. What that means is that you can't change the, the contents of a string. Once you've built this string of characters up, and you've sealed it and, and made it, it is fixed mm. for the end of time. It is immutable. Immutable. It cannot be changed. Cannot be changed. And we can actually hover the mouse over the replace here. And you'll notice as I see that, I hover the mouse. It actually says very clearly, returns a string, except the old value is replaced with the new value. So it is not the same string. It's equivalent. It's not right. the same one. But what if I said instead, let's go ahead and take this little chunk of code here, and I'm going to say, just like I did before, friends equal friends dot, dot replace. replace. So now you've chosen to mutate the value of that variable, right? So mm -hmm. if you were to print this, in theory, it should have the new sentence with um, Scott replaced by Damien mm -hmm. in that friends variable, because you've explicitly assigned friends to the new string. So that's right. fresh. Yep. All right. Let's give that a try. I'm going to hit Control S or hit Save. This is another little reminder here. You see this white dot? That is the dirty bit. <laughs> Isn't that a weird thing to call it? The dirty bit. What that means is that I have changed this file, but I haven't yet saved it. So I'm going to hit Control S and go away. Uh, or, of course, I could go to the File menu and say Save. Another reminder about hotkeys. They're Control always S. available. That's right. They're always being pointed to. Okay, let's give this a try. All right, so that one stuck because we were explicit about it. That's right. In fact, we changed the friends variable. That's right. One common mistake I see people make in IDEs in, in general is that in they, integrated development environments. Yeah, they make changes to code, they don't save it, and they'll run and wonder why their changes haven't taken, right? In the IDE, when you hit F5, it does an auto save and then it runs. If you're going between the IDE and the command line, you have to remember to save before going to run on the command line. So that's a great point. So if I change that. Scott, if I change Damien to just pants, yeah. I'm not going to save. So we can see that it's, it's a dirty file, meaning an unsaved file. I'm going to return over here and I'm going to run it again. Pants. And you're like, huh? What's going on? It's not what, working. What happened? Well, you never saved it. So when I hit save, now it's now really it going to happen. And now we're, we have a friend called Pam. That's right. Okay. Super important. Now, friends.replace, that replace found Scott, looked around in the string, swapped it out. We can return back over to our Microsoft Learn here, go to the next section here about searching for strings. We can also just ask the question, not to replace it, but does our list of friends contain Scott? That's right. So I could say, friends.contains Scott. And I'm going to change that. I'm going to move this, this little chunk down here. So we're going to say friends.contain. I'm going to copy and then paste it in there. So then the question is, oop, look at that. A little squiggly, a little squiggly there. Ooh, compile error. See? It's saying, hang on. I did not expect that semicolon. I expected a parentheses. I added a extra semicolon. Yep. So it's trying its best to help you. Let's spell check again. Okay. So I'm saying friends.contains Scott. Nowhere in my code here am I actually outputting the string friends. So I wonder what's going to say, what's going to happen here. Let's find out. I'm going to clear my screen. I'm going to say .NET run. True. True. It's true. Is that a string? 
Is true a string? Why did it say? It's a good question. We're going to learn about that when we dig into the type system. Type system, objects, yep. Yep. And then the last thing I wanted to point out, which is kind of cool, is you can also say thing like friends dot two upper mm -hmm. or two lower for uppercase and lowercase. And that can be a very shouty friends. Hi, friends. Hi, friends. And it's us. to be clear, it, all these methods are, are these functions return new strings. You aren't changing the actual string friends. You're making a new string with the mutation that's uppercase or lowercase or replace. Right. right. And you're actually teaching us a word that makes us sound smarter. You're saying mutation. Mutation, immutable. Right. Immutable, not mutable. Not, not mutable. mutable not, that's right. Not, not a mutant. <laughs> so here we have our two upper string and our unchanged, unchanged one. string. Exactly. That's cool. And then, of course, we saw other things. We have contains. We can say, yes, it contains this. No, it doesn't contain that. Or length. Oh, to yeah. Show how length. long a string is. So we could say dot length. I want to again point out how quickly and comfortably we're making a change and looking at it, making a change and looking at it. Now, David and I like to go Alt Tab and run it from here. But the other way is to just say dot length and then hit, you know, Control F5 or press that Run and Debug button. But sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming. It really just depends. Hello, David. Here's your output. Shouty friends. And that 30, that's the length and the number of characters. Characters, yep. Okay. The number of atoms in that string, right? Number of atoms in that molecule. Like yeah, it. that's a good point. That's a good analogy. And then the other thing we can do is starts with or ends with, right? It's very common to do in C sharp. Is it? Yep. So if we do that, we go back over and stuff, we'll say friends dot, let's say, starts with. Go. Like as if it's Scott. Yep. Okay. So, I'm saying. so you're looking to see if the friends string starts with the character's SEO. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Let's find out. I have an idea that it probably will not. <laughs> it begins with my. <laughs> right? It so it's false. Not, not it's true. False because it begins with the words my. We change that to my, and I can have a space or not a space. If I said my with two spaces, yeah, it looks right, but it's not right. Yeah. There's my in one space, so. Right. So spaces matter inside of a string. It does. Okay, so that says false. We'll go back. There's a name for that, you know. It's called significant white space. Significant? Significant white space. White space, white That's space a great point. that matters. Okay. So there it says true. And you called this out earlier because before we had a very long sentence. If I go like this, that is a little bit significant. That matters. <laughs> okay. So why is that white space significant? Right. But that one is not. Compilers, so the C sharp compiler itself doesn't care about the white space or the spacing. That's for humans. So like you could put all the code on one line with, with semicolons and it would be fine to compile. But for humans to be able to read code and write code and understand code, you have spacing. So this, this is the human part of trying to understand the program. So we add spaces, we add indentation, we add those things, but they don't matter to, to the C-sharp compiler. Um, when you have a string, you're declaring what text you want to put in that string. So every character um, matters. Every space, every tab, every invisible character, every thing in general matters inside those quotes. So that's kind of the, the difference between white space that matters and ones that, that don't. That's a really great point. So all of this space here, all this white space, everything around here yep. doesn't matter. Things that do matter are inside these strings. That's right. So that's significant white space. And yeah. none of that matters. And you said it could even be all in one line. So for fun, put all the code on a single line up top. That's going to look really confusing, though. Yeah, only to humans, but to, to the computer. It's going to be gonna amazing, work right? Just exactly if as you before. run this, it should just work. That's you've saved so much space and memory by compressing <laughs> all the code into I'm one line. Pretty sure we have not, <laughs> but it's just going to still work. Yeah. Okay. Which brings up another uh, point as we end our discussion of basics of strings: is if you mess stuff up, we talked about Control X, Control C, and Control V for cut, copy, paste. 
we can control Z our way to glory. So I'm just going to hit control Z, 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 Z. Look at this. Beautiful. Put it back exactly Fixed. as before. And look how far. Is it going to remember hours? How long does this go back? As long as you can. Look at that. There's there must be some limit. <laughs> we'll go back to Damien. So in this case here, the limit is as far back as our text editor chose to keep it, yep. which for Visual Studio Code is as long as I had it open. Right. Isn't that cool? All right. We are learning C Sharp, and we have just finished learning about the basics of strings and searching strings. I think we're getting uh, some interesting parts here. Yes, yeah, good. All right. Good Thanks part. for learning C Sharp with us.